like the stock. Hey everyone, I'm Daniel. Today we are going to discuss my YOLO into the world of GameStop and the subreddit group Wall Street Bets. Now, Wall Street Bets has been trending on all of the financial news recently, primarily in the last week. And this is all down to a position that they decided to make on buying GameStop stocks, collectively harnessing the power of the internet, the power of community, the power of memes to fuel the meteoric rocket ship to the moon, the launch of GameStop stock, which was trending pretty much flat for about one or two years, to the moon. This is all because of one person called Deep Value. Now, Deep Value has a YouTube channel called Roaring Kitty. I must say, I love the intro to his channel because it just has so many cats. It's a very, very fun intro. So, anybody who knows me will know that I really, really like cats. So, anybody else who likes cats is generally going to be a friend of mine. I'm more likely to trust that. I can't say that I'm taking personal advice from Deep <coughs> Value, aka Roaring Kitty, but what he has managed to achieve in a few months, a few weeks, and a few days in building this massive community of internet redditors is something very very unique and it is really a moment in time maybe it's been fueled by a year almost of people stuck in quarantine bored they have extra money just kind of sitting in their account to be honest i had never even heard of wall street bets until about a week ago and then stuff just started blowing up everywhere and it was really really quite exciting the subreddit has mutated into this almost unbelievable force of people who are so excited about sticking it to the billionaire hedge funds who have stolen hope from the younger generation this 99% versus the 1% which is almost endemic to the American capitalist dream. It's quite ironic when you think about it, about how a bunch of people who have grown up playing video games and as they've become adults, their parents have told them, oh, what are you doing still playing video games when you're like 35, 40, 30, or 25? So something that is quite ironic is how something as innocuous as video games has become so ingrained in our culture now and the video game industry continues to grow in leaps and bounds yet historically the number one retailer in america for video games has seen their share price at ridiculously low undervalued prices for a number of months and years because of the perception that everybody buys video games digitally, online. So why do people need to go down to the mall to go to their local GameStop or EB Games to buy physical video games? So GameStop has been likened to Blockbuster as being an archaic dinosaur business model which is destined to failure. So Wall Street Bets analyzed the stock of GameStop and noticed a very unusual situation in that a lot of multi-billion dollar hedge funds were aggressively shorting the stock price of GameStop because they were basically betting that GameStop was going to fail and that the price of GameStop shares would crash even lower than $4. So what they were doing is they were putting all of these really aggressive short positions on GameStop stock. Now what Wall Street Bets likes to do is they like to analyze stocks in the stock market and kind of try and mess with Wall Street and mess with the hedge funds. Right so over the years they've sort of had a bit of an influence in not necessarily pump and dumping stocks but when they try and make a move it tends to be for the purposes of sticking it to the man and trying to punish the hedge fund companies. 
Now, one of the major companies that was actually shorting GameStop, a hedge fund company called Melvin Capital. Wall Street Bets decided that Melvin Capital needed to be taught a lesson for trying to hurt GameStop. What is the best way to hurt a hedge fund company? By making them lose money. Them losing money is the biggest, most painful way of teaching them a lesson. What is the most effective way of making them hemorrhage money, especially if they have very aggressive short positions on GameStop? Why? It is to buy GameStop stock. Deep <coughs> value. When he first identified this very peculiar situation with GameStop stock being aggressively shorted, in particular by Melvin Capital, he decided to start buying stock of GameStop. And then he started talking about it on Wall Street Bets. A lot of other people started reading his position on GameStop and Melvin Capital. It just sort of exploded from that. A bunch of people talking online, not really colluding together, but collectively saying, I like the stock. I believe in the company. I believe in the stock. This company should not be shorted into oblivion. The company just needs to stay around. So people started buying the stock. And then the price started going up. The hedge funds started getting scared. What Melvin Capital did was they shorted GameStop. Now, shorting a stock means borrowing the stock from someone who actually owns the stock and betting aggressively that the price will decrease. A short position on a stock means that you make money when the market goes down. Typically, people buy a stock at a given price and they hope that the price goes up. Melvin Capital borrow the stock when the stock is at $5 and then they put a short position on the stock and say, oh, we think that GameStop is a dying business. The person they borrow the stock at, at $5, is happy because they get the stock back. But Melvin Capital will be happy if the price goes down because if they put a short price of $2 on and the price Price goes down below that, then that means that then they are able to buy the stock at the short price, which was $2. They pocket the difference between $2, the price that they physically bought the stock from someone from the open market when their short option expires, and then they return that stock to the person that they borrowed it off, or the company that they borrowed it off. And they also have to pay a little bit of interest. Wall Street Bets identified that Melvin Capital were very expensive to the price of GameStop going up. They would have done all of their due diligence and analyzed GameStop's financials and their business plans for the upcoming years. They would have seen the trends and analyzed the stock prices over the decades that GameStop has been in business. And they would have come to the conclusion it's trending downwards. So if we put aggressive short positions on this, then we stand to make a lot of money. But what they did not anticipate was the subreddit group Wall Street Bets and basically regular people deciding to join the cause, fight the 1% by buying GameStop stock, by buying GME, because we like the stock. We like the stock. So subreddit page Wall Street Bets has been intensely entertaining for me as a person who loves memes, right? Reddit is full of memes and Wall Street Bets has come out with some really, really hilarious ones. They almost have their own lexicon, their own language. So it's a very self-deprecating kind of community. It's really, really amusing. So there are people who are posting their games and that's exciting. But then there is also a trend of people posting their losses and this is called loss porn. It's almost a cathartic way of dealing with financial loss. That is what contributes to the camaraderie and the community building that Wall Street Bets has created. When I checked this afternoon, Wall Street Bets had over eight and a half million members, also known as degenerates. That is more members than the entire population of New York, which is bigger than Wall Street. 
not even a month ago. The number of users and the number of Redditors on Wall Street Bet was significantly smaller than that. So I guess if you think about the collective buying power of eight and a half million people all deciding that they like GameStop stock, they want to buy the stock, send a message to the billionaire hedge funds such as Melvin Capital that they shouldn't try and kill a company like GameStop by aggressively shorting it, it really shows the power of community. And I think that's a very exciting catalyst for change. That is why I decided that I would make my own financial decision to buy GameStop stock. So I am the proud owner of 40 GME stocks and I have diamond hands to the moon. Now something that is extremely controversial is how do eight and a half million people buy stocks? Like they're not gonna buy stocks through the hedge funds that they're trying to send a message to, are they? The most cost-effective way of buying stocks is Robinhood. Now Robinhood is an iOS app, Android app, web app where people can just buy small amounts of shares. They can buy fractional shares. They can buy complete shares. But what they did is they had zero fees. So that just basically means that people could put their savings into their share trading account on Robinhood and then purchase stocks that they like, such as GameStop. That's what a lot of people did. Now, on January the 28th, just before a bunch of short options were due to expire, Robinhood did the unthinkable. They basically suspended trading of GameStop stock. So they prevented people from being able to buy GameStop stock because they just didn't have enough liquidity to pay the clearing houses according to, what's the guy's name? Vlad. I watched a video on YouTube today of a clubhouse group chat between Elon Musk and he was putting the squeeze on Vlad who is the CEO of Robinhood asking why Robinhood prevented their millions of users from being able to purchase GameStop stock and would only let them sell GameStop stock even more drastically forced some people to sell GameStop stock by preventing the free market from being able to purchase GameStop stock, then that means that the only way that the price can go is down. And that is the fundamental reason why the price of GameStop stock crashed from about 380 US dollars a share to 90 dollars a share. What do you think that did? It made Wall Street bets even angrier. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out over the next couple of weeks. At the end of the day, I haven't invested money that I'm not prepared to lose, but obviously it is a little bit scary to see money invested in the stock market take a beating. But my position into GameStop stock is nowhere near as painful as what has been happening to companies like Melvin Capital, who lost, I think I read, figures of about $70 billion from the stock price going up to $483 a share. Good job, Wall Street Bits. I will keep on holding my GameStop stock with diamond hands until we rock it to the moon. That brings us to the end of this video. And if you enjoyed it, please smash that like button, click the subscribe button, and ring the bell for the notifications. And if you have any comments on how much of a degenerate I am for YOLOing into GME, then please leave a comment down below in the comment section. See you next time. Bye.